Hey guys, and welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video, we're going through the Essendon versus North Melbourne game in which North Melbourne ran out 51 point winners, 58 to seven. Essendon really just did not look good on the day. They had no mid forward connection and I mean, North just dominated. Um, and it was actually sort of a different domination to what happened in the last game against um, Sydney for North Melbourne. But yeah, they've just shown that they are the best this year. So let's just get into this video here. And you'll see Maddie Gay with a 106 here. Uh, she had 30 touches, six marks, four tackles, uh, two free kicks against for still a 106 was quite a big on the day. And uh, yeah, as a defender, that's almost that feels another like 20 or 30 bigger because the defender line is roughly around that 70, 72, 73 marker, whereas the midfielders are around that 100 marker that you sort of want. So yeah, it just shows the big difference between uh, what Maddie Gay scored and what uh, Pris Barker scored. Six less, but it feels like about 40 less. Um, then you have Maddie Prisparkers on 100. She had 29 touches, six tackles, uh, five free kicks, four two against. Um, yeah, she just did an amazing job there to get to 100. Um, considering that you had Riddell and Garner both go sub 100, it was a pretty good um, effort from Maddie. Then you have Nanscorn here, 20 touches, nine tackles. This is sort of what I was expecting more so when I was talking about Nanscorn and how I sort of hoped that she would be able to push it towards that sort of 22, 23 touch, nine tackle effort because that's when she gets that 100 marker. But um, yeah, nine tackles, she's back to her tackling best. Wales, 67, you can see a big drop off there, 23 points. Um, she had 12 touches, three tackles, 26 hitouts. Didn't do really that well in the hitouts, but you're coming up against King and Rennie. Um, when you're a solo, it's not really ever going to work out. Um, so yeah, she just... And also Randall, if you needed any more. But yeah, just wasn't going to work out, I don't think. And she was always going to have a low game. Unless she could make it up with the tackles. Gaylor, 63. Clark, 61. Walker, 56. Kane, 50. Alexander, 41. You can sort of see the nothingness of the rest of this. Um, and yeah, too good, 36. That was just a bad decision. I just sort of went for it because I thought I necessarily had to. I thought Bonnie, too good stat. Underlying stats were really good. Um, and then she was getting better, but no, she just looked so out of it. And she's that mid-forward connection that they really need. And it was just not there for them. Eight touches, two marks, three tackles, a goal, but three kick, three kicks against. Um, yeah, she just did not work. Bannister, 34. Ke uh, Keeney, Brown, Van Loon, Gamble, Bush, Scott, Williamson, Goff. Um, all lower than that and really irrelevant. Then you've got on the North Melbourne side, Jazz Garner, 96, sorry. She had 24 touches, seven tackles. It was just a pretty big display from her. Um, yeah, she did her job. Um, I mean, she did only score 96, but if that's like a floor game for her, um, then that's not even the worst. Uh, it's just those, when, when those type of scorers, like Conti and stuff, Robottom, Riddell, when they score those 70 scores, that's when you really are annoyed. Um, a 96 or an 88 is sort of like, it's a down game, but if that's the sort of low floor, uh, games, it's not the worst. Riddell, 23 touches this time, six tackles. It's just, yeah, a low game for her on all stats, pretty much. Um, maybe just, yeah, down about th five or six handballs probably is the is the main reason. Um, King, 83, uh, 16 uh, touches, nine tackles. And, yeah, she did, um, she did her job there. She's the third midfielder there. So if you needed a midfielder to probably score you, um, 85 plus for the last couple of weeks and on the cheap side, then I would say Mia King's probably your best bet. Um, Emma King, 75 in the ruck, also kicked a goal. Amy Smith as well, 74, seven tackles, 19 touches. So you can see her and Chess Craven also did really well on the back line, I'm pretty sure. Sheila dominated in the air and got to a 67 on three goals, one, but not going to be fancy relevant. Tess Craven, I was sort of surprised how well she did. She slotted into, like the commentators were saying, that Emma Carney rolled really well. And she got herself a uh, 65 in general on 15 touches, four tackles. Tripodi um, slowly just continues to um, sort of put out scores of 60 odds. And then when you get her in the rain, she goes up to about an 80 or a 90. 
So she did really well. 11 touches, 10 tackles uh, for a 65. Bresnahan, 64 on 15 touches, 4 marks, 3 tackles. Um, Bruton, 58. And this is probably just the difference between a lot of them. And I was having this discussion with Alex uh, from AFL Today about this on, on the, when Essendon were playing. It's just I feel like the big difference in the AFLW with the good teams and the bad teams is the uh, mid-forward connection. I mean, you just look at um, the non-midfielder um, sort of ground ball players um, for North Melbourne. You've got Bruton. you got... Uh, where is... you got Bruton. you got... O'Loughlin. you got... Um, I mean, O'Loughlin is kind of a winger. Um, who else? They also have someone else that they, like, don't use in... Um, is Vicky Wall in the defence, probably. But, yeah, they have two or three girls that are, like... Uh, really would be midfielders in other sides, but they aren't midfielders in this side. Even Tripodi plays a little bit, I think. I mean, maybe wing, maybe forward. Um, I don't know exactly, but yeah, you just see how what this is for them. I just want to say Bresenham was behind the ball, wasn't she? She surely was behind the ball. Yeah, half back. Um, but yeah, you see, O'Loughlin's probably going to show as a as a winger, isn't she? Uh, let's just check this. But you see here, yeah, you got O'Loughlin, you got um, Bruton as well uh, as Gats or because um, I know she, I know Sheila isn't um, is Gats a winger? What's the go with her? Uh, yeah, winger there. But even the wingers as well, there it's sort of that wing half forward space. I feel like is actually the most crucial in AFLW, and um, you just look at the names for the uh, for the. Um, O'Shea might be as well, but let me just check this. She might be a defender as well. I can't exactly remember. Um, that looks more like a defender. Uh, sort of, it's hard to tell, but yeah, sort of that mid half forward as well. So you see exactly what I mean is that they've got names coming off that, whereas, like, for instance, Sydney has, like, Brook Lock. They have, like, basically small forwards there, um, as well as, and that would be where Chloe Malloy is, and that's why Sydney probably aren't doing the best. Bonnie Tugwood's missed a majority of the season. That's why Essendon have been struggling a little bit. Um, who else has missed a majority of the season, etc.? Um, but yeah, like it's just sort of that space there. I find that is the most crucial for the AFLW. And um, yeah, there's no one else fancy relevant in this game, pretty much. So uh, fancy relevance is basically Tripodi, Riddell, Garner, and then probably Matty Gay. Pris Marcus, I would say, has some fantasy relevance, and that's pretty much it for this video and this recap. So if you did enjoy the recap, remember to like and subscribe, turn the notification bell on so you know when I upload, and I'll see you guys in the next recap. Bye, guys.